Hi, I'm Brother Lars Jordan, pastor of New Bethel Baptist Church, located at 2729 Oak Grove Road in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And today our Sunday school lesson for September the 18th, 2022 is Jacob called Israel. And our Bible scriptures today are taken from Genesis, the 32nd chapter, verses 22 through 32. And we're still in this quarterly theme of God's exceptional choice. And our unit of study for this month is God calls Abraham's family. And again, I do apologize for the way that we're putting everything up right now. Our tech man is still out on assignment in the military, and, and we do understand that. And I'm doing what I can. But we'll move on with it because we won't make excuses, but we do have a reason. God is able. He is able, and, and we're doing this. And in this lesson today, we move to the 32nd chapter of Genesis. Now, we have gone through Abram's call from God to go out into the nation, and through your seed will all the nations of the world be blessed. And, and we know that Abraham has become the father of faith. And even though that we are not the, the children of Israel, the Israelites, Paul said that even not all Israel is Israel because Israel are people that were to be governed by God. And that would be the change of J Jacob's name, even though it was seen that some that it would be Prince of God as we get to that 28th verse of this chapter. But in that 28th verse, as we get ready to start into this lesson, it is the overshadowing of this entire story of Jacob's life. It is the, this man is a man that would prevail. In other words, he, after he is broken, David let us know that he, he had to be broken before God could really use him the way that he wanted to be, wanted to use him so that he could really be set aside for the true service of God. It, David said that God desires a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. When we are broken and we fall down before God and, and put it all in his hand, then we prevail. Then he says, okay, here it is. Here is your blessing right here. And there's no denying who the blessing is coming from or flowing from. This this guy, Jacob, he had, he had been that, that child that we had talked about in our last week's lesson as we talked we. We saw that God did choose the younger one, even though his brother Esau was the first of the twins to, to come out and would be the older one. He tricked his brother for his birthright. Then we notice that as we come into our lesson today, that he had even tricked his father Isaac for the blessing of the elder child. He had tricked his father and his mother even aided in the deception of Isaac, even dressing Jacob up to the point where he felt like his hairy brother Esau. Esau meant hairy. He was hairy when he went to his father. He even smelt of the great outdoors, even though he was a young man that stayed inside the house that could cook the venison and could make the, the pottage, the red meat, the red sauce and the red meat and, and, and stir up those, those onions and garlic up on the stove with a little oil in them and and make his brother desire that food so much to his hunger was overwhelming and definitely want to be uh, satisfied with some of that red pottage that you have cooked there, brother Jacob. And Jacob said, I'll give it to you, but you have to give me the birthright. And his brother told him in our last week's lesson, what will a birthright mean to me if I'm dead? So now we see that this guy was a guy of trickery. But if you have read the accounts of Jacob as you as, as we as we left that particular area, we saw that he even tricked his father. We did we we saw that if we had been still reading, coming up to where we are now, after he had tricked his father and his brother went in to receive the blessing of the elder son, the father said, Who are you? And that would be the big thing because this man, Jacob, in our lesson today would be act who he is. And he deceived his father with his name at that time. He didn't say, I'm Harry, and I'm the one that's going to be the, the red man, the man that started the Edomite nation. I'm not him. I'm, I'm, 
I'm Jake. I, I'm. He told his father that he was. He was Esau. He was not the heel snatcher. Rather, he wasn't the one that 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 would uh, that that tried to pull his brother back and be the first one, the one to come out first, so that he could receive everything first. But his mother, Rebecca, was already told by God that the older will serve the younger. The older would become first in line. He would be the one that would have things. And we noticed in our last week's lesson, even though Jacob was a heel snatcher, he did have a desire for the things of God because the things of God was tied up in the birthright. The things of God were tied up in the blessing, as we would find out later on. The things of God, the, the, but his brother didn't desire the things of God. Even though he was tricking, tricking to get the things of God, he did have a genuine concern for the things of God. And he wanted to be around the things of God. He wanted to be a part of God's program. And God blessed him to be a part of his program, even as he and his mother had deceived. But he found out that he was only a, only a mediocre deceiver. When he got to his brother Laban, as his mother sent him to her brother and his uncle and said, here, you stay with him. And there he saw his the wife that he wanted, Rachel, but he ended up tricking his 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 son-in-law, his nephew at that time, into marrying his firstborn, who was Leah, who was the one with the weak eyes, the or the I guess not easy on the eyes. But he ended up marrying her and having even the child that Jesus Christ would come through, his lineage would come through, and that would be Judah. But both of those women were in a struggle, even as as we left those other chapters that we were in to to have him a child because he had to work 14 years to get the woman that he wanted, and that was Rachel. And he did marry both of those sisters, Leah and Rachel. And because Rachel was still was barren, he ended up going into her handmaiden that she would give her, give her handmaiden, Billa, and, and he went in, into her and started having children. So it, as, as Leah stopped having children, she gave Zipha her, her handmaiden, and, and they were just kind of in a struggle together. But Rachel did finally have children. She had Joseph, who we know would be at one time second in command in Egypt, and also she would have the youngest of the son that would wrap up that situation there in Egypt when, when Joseph would say, bring the younger child, and that would be Benjamin, which would be his, his brother. So now we, we see... It, this lesson start today. It, Jacob had been in that struggle with his uncle because God had told him to leave that land and go home. And his uncle wanted him to stay there and continue to work. His uncle had been blessed because of, because of Jacob. He even said that that tomb that Jacob was the reason that he was being blessed so much in his cattle and, 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 and in his life. And, and everything was wonderful for him. And then Jacob decided that he was going to leave and when he did decide to leave, he needed something to carry with him. So they decided on the spotted and the non-spotted sheep. And his uncle decided to deceive him in that, telling the, the sons to take those sheep away. But, but then God gave him a plan to fix that situation. So he was greatly blessed, and he and his wife, wives and, and their servants left out one night along with their cattle one day and left when the father didn't know, when, when Laban didn't know. And Laban was after him. So this man's whole life was a struggle. He struggled to at the at, in the birth canal. He struggled there with his brother Esau as he wanted what he had, the birthright. He struggled with his uncle as he was being deceived by the uncle, but finally did leave. And when the uncle found out three days later and chased after him, found him, but the God had talked to that uncle and said, if you mess with that boy, I'll mess with you, I'll mess you up. So he had to leave him alone, but he did tell him, you did deceive me. So he, he left, he, his uncle had to leave him alone, but the greatest thing that he was worried about was his own brother, and God told him to go home, and when he sent his servants, he, even the, the way that he sent them, they servants said that your brother is coming to meet you, Esau. But he's bringing 400 men to coming out to meet you. That put fear in Jacob. Even though now he had been just a houseboy, now he was a tough, grown man. 20 years later, now he was, he was a man that was fearful even still of his brother, even after he had been raising animals and not the houseboy anymore. Out there raising the animals, 
He was afraid of his brother because he was bringing 400 men with him. And he put, a, put together gifts and things to give to that brother. And now he wants to make sure his family is going to be saved. He divided his, 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 his people there and sent half of them one way with, with, with animals and stuff and half of them one way. He said, well, maybe part of us will survive. But then we get to this part of the lesson here. And he has a plan for his family to survive. And it says that here, as, as he was, was trying to get this plan together, the 22nd verse starts our lesson today. It says, and he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his 11 sons and passed over the four Jabba. He, he, went, he went out. He was afraid. Now, so he, he didn't want his brother Esau to hurt his wives or his children or the things that he had, his wives, all four of them, because even those women servants were his his his, his concubines or his wives. They were having children for him. They were they were servant wives. So he he uh, he had Leah, he had Rachel, but he also had Zippah and Billa, and those those all bore him children. So he rose up at night and he took all four of them and he left that place. And he took them and his 11 sons. He also had his, his daughter, I'm sure, Dinah with him. But, he, he, but it says here that he had his 11 sons and passed over the four Jabba, passed over that, that, that brook or that stream or that river, and that river that fed into the Jordan River, uh, there on the east side of the Jordan, it fed into the Jordan River. But that Benjamin was not born yet because Rachel would die giving birth to, to him. But, but here he says that he took his 11 sons and all of them went and crossed over this brook, crossed over into this place under the cover of night. They went out at night because the fearful still of his brother Esau, remember, while his father-in-law was working, that's when he left with his family and, and his animals and all of his servants and stuff. But now while it's night, he is trying to make sure his family is going to survive the meeting up with his brother. So what he does here, he, he devises that plan in verse 23 says, and he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. <clears throat> he said he took them, he took, he gathered his family together and he sent them to the other side of that brook, of, of the brook Jabba, or uh, the river is, is actually a river. He put, sent them to the other, other side. And all the things that he had with him, he sent those things to the other side with, with, with them. As, as they went over, he, he sent them, them with them, and all this, the possessions are going to go with them to the other side. Verse 24 says, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. This is kind of a... a tricky incident to try to even see in our minds and explain, even though we've seen the graphics and pictures over the years that so many have portrayed and, and drawn and, and tried to help us to understand it. But I don't know if those pictures really grasp what's going on here. It says that Jacob was left alone. He was left alone. There's no other feeling that's worse than a feeling of being alone. No, there's no one else to, to care for you. Even a person that is a loner wants to run into someone from time to time. God even protected the, the mind of John the Revelator there in the book of Revelation by he, his son, and the Holy Spirit showing up to be with them, and he had, was escorted around heaven with angels that were leading him through places. So everyone wants to have someone around them, and this man was left alone. But was he alone? After the semicolon, it says, there wrestled a man with him until day, the breaking of day. He was alone, but yet someone showed up and just began to wrestle. It doesn't say that there was a confrontation. It doesn't say that they began a fight in, in, as the start of an argument, and then one swung on the other, and then they tied up and, and, and both began to, to, to wrestle. I don't know if it was even a struggle in that type of way as we would see a wrestling match because our minds have, have fixed a, the wrestling of something in, in, a, in a particular way. And we don't know if it was a wrestle of the mind and heart or, or, or a physical wrestle with this man. 
but there wrestled a man with him, and it wasn't just like just just a moment. It was until daybreak, until the breaking of day. This man appeared to him, and and they would wrestle here together. So something was happening in the life of this man. There in the 28th chapter, when he left running from his brother Esau because his brother had decided that, that, that he was going to have to kill his brother the, Jacob. He wanted to kill him. His desire was to kill his brother Jacob for taking the blessing and the birthright, but the blessing was the thing that, that Jacob actually tricked his father to, to, in order to get it. He begged his father for it and even said that that hill stature and, and 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 kind of identified and said his name was named right. So, but there in the in the twenty eighth chapter, when he left out running from his brother, he was there and he laid down on a pillow and he saw the ladder coming from heaven and that was the dissension of angels up and down that ladder. And when he got up that next morning, he felt that he had been in the presence of the Lord there in, there in Luz. He named that place Bethel which means the, the, the house of God. So he named it Bethel. At that place, he was a man that God gave promises and God saved him at that place. But he still had a ministry to carry out because in the birthright, in that birthright that he took from his brother with that meal, there was this thing to keep the family close to God because the promise or the covenant that God made with Abraham would be passed down through Isaac and now it to Jacob. And so he had that birthright. It was supposed to go to Esau, but we know it really wasn't because God had already told Rebekah that it would go to the younger, that the younger would be the one that would be in charge or the older would serve the younger. So we, we know here that he, this man, it, there in, the, in that 22nd chapter, 28th chapter, he got saved. But now we would see this man get sanctified or set aside for the service of God as we continue on with this lesson. It says in verse 25 here, said that when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint and he wrestled with him. Said so now, now after they had been in this, in this, 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 holding on this wrestling match in, in, in this, the, the, as we would see the, see the wrestling match, not necessarily knowing if it was like that because we do know that who he was wrestling with don't have to wrestle with anyone he, because he was the one that even spoke the world into existence. So when he saw that he prevailed not against him, so the man that he was wrestling with could have destroyed him. When he saw that if I, in order to stop this guy from fighting me, I would have to destroy him by, or seriously hurt him. After that, he touched the hollow of his thigh. He gave him grace. In other words, that was a gift. When he touched him, rather than destroy him, there he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. As he touched him, he knocked his hip out of joint. He, he, he wounded him rather than destroying him as he wrestled with him. He was still holding on to him. The holding on would continue even after this. As he wrestled with him, he was still holding on to the man some type of way, would not let him out of his presence, would not let him go, whether it was in the mind or in the physical, he would not let him go. He had been touched and, and his, joint, his hip was out of joint. And now... That, that verse 26 said that he said, let me go for the day breaking. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Now, the, the person that was talking to him, the person that he was wrestling with or having this struggling with, this struggle match with, he, the Lord had turned uh, uh, this house boy into a show enough fighter as he was there with his uncle, because he finally faced his uncle when his uncle came after and said, what in the world do you want from me? I've never stole anything or taken anything from you at that time. His wife, Rachel, had taken something from her father, but, but Jacob didn't know anything about it. But still, he said, I've never taken anything from you. He toughened up before his, his father-in-law, and now he's toughening up before God himself. He's saying, look, I, I'm I'm here and I'm not going to let you go. He said, let, let me go for the daybreak. The Lord was telling him, let me go. And he said, I will not let you go. 
And this was a wonderful thing because this was where the Lord wanted him to get to where he had never let go of the Lord. And that's where the Lord wants us to get us to get where we'll never let go of that unchanging hand of God. So he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. I, I need you to bless me. I want you to bless me even at this time. I want you to, to, to take care of me. This man could have, he appeared to him, so he could have disappeared. But he stayed right there and let this man have this struggle with him until this man got to this point. So it had to be a reason that he was staying there with him, and he would get to see the reason as 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 the as the the, the lesson goes on. Verse twenty seven says, and he said unto him, "What is thy name?" And he said, "Jacob." Remember, we just said, we just told you. His father asked him. He said, "He said, who is this? What who who are you?" And so, in other words, what is your name? when he went to his father to deceive him and steal the, 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 the blessing from his father. He said he was the hill snatcher, but he said, I am Harry. So his father said, come over here and let me touch you. Let me feel you. And he went to his father and his father began to rub the hair that his, he and his mother had planted from an animal on his body so that when his father felt him, he would feel like the Harry Esau. And he gave him the incorrect name. He said that I am Esau. He wouldn't tell him that he was hill snatcher. So his father believed who, who he said he was. And so he, he knew this. What is thy name? He said, my name is Jacob. The Lord knew what his name was, but he needed him to tell him that he was a hill snatcher that he was the tricky guy. He needed Jacob to tell him that his name was Jacob because in order for him to move forward, in order for him to move forward, he had to be broken. He had to be a person that was pinned down. He, so he needed to give his whole name so that the Lord could change his life and change his situation. He needed to be honest before God. And he said, verse 20, 28, he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. But Israel, colon, for as a prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. He said, look, your name is not going to be Hill Snatcher anymore. Yes, you were honest with your name this time. You deceived your father, but you didn't try to deceive me. You told me your real name. Now you have been broken. This is where the Lord needed him to be. He's been broken. A broken spirit, David said, we told you a while ago. A broken and a contrite heart. A heart that was just ripped apart before God and, and pouring itself out before him. Letting him repair everything and putting everything back the way that it needs to be, be, be put back. He said, your name is no more hill snatcher. Now your name is going to be governed by God. Or it, yeah, prince of God. But the, if you read the thought of it, it is governed by God. You'll be a nation that is governed by God. We know that that nation even started at that time to be a God-governed nation. Now, did they always accept the government of God? No, they didn't, but, but one did. And he successfully carried out the government of God, and that would be Jesus Christ himself. He said, after, after the colon said, for as a prince, thou hast power with God. You have power with God and with men. You have power with God and with men. When Peter made his, his declaration about who Jesus was, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, he told Jesus when Jesus had asked, who do men say that I am? He said, now tell me who you say I am. And he said, thou art true, Simon Bar Barjona. Flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my father did. He said, but. I'll give you the keys to the kingdom and whatever you open on earth will be open in heaven and whatever you close on earth will be closed in heaven. So there you will have power with God and with men after you have received the keys to the kingdom. After these things have, he said, you have power with God. You have the birthright. You have that which is the, the seed of the family, the seed of the faith-based generation, the people that come after you with, and, and trust God God would treat them just as they tre treated your grandfather. If they believe God, he'll count it or impute it unto them for righteousness. 
Thou hast power with God and with men. Men will look up to you. They know that your name was Jacob, a hill snatcher, but they'll also know that God changed your name to govern by God, which is Israel. And so he said, you have power with God and with man. So in the light of that, thou hast prevailed. You have prevailed with both God and men. You have prevailed. You have been broken. When were you broken? When were you when were you prevailing? When did you prevail? You were you prevailed when you got broken, when you were pent to the ground, when you were struggling to hold on, when you didn't have anyone else that could bless you other than the Lord himself, when the water in your well ran dry and there was no one else to go to but the Lord, that's when you prevailed and, and you realized where all your blessings flowed from, where the well, where the spiritual well and the fountain was flowing all the time and it never stopped flowing. And Jacob asked him, he said, you tell me what I pray thee thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou asked my, after my name? And he blessed him there. He didn't even tell him his name. He said, you know my name. That, and, and that's what he was talking about there. He, when, he, when he asked him this question, it was a rhetorical question. Why are you asking me my name? You already know who I am. That's why you asked me to bless you. You already have an inkling of who I am. You realize there at Luz, or as you, as you changed to Bethel, that you were talking to, the, to God himself. Now you know you're talking to the Lord himself. You're talking to the incarnate Christ at, at that time or at the theophany. You're talking to him. But So you're begging to ask me. He begs him, what is your name? And he said, well, why are you asking me what is my name? And he blessed him there. You already know what my name is, but here it goes here in verse 30. He said, and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I, a colon there, for I have seen God's face to face and my life is preserved. Remember God told Moses, he said, you can't look at me face to face. You can't look directly upon me for you will be consumed. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 12 that God is a consuming fire. Now, he didn't see him in the flesh face to face. We don't know how this, this theophany happened. We, we don't know it because God would come to us in, in, in come to them at that time in the form of a man or something at that time. Melchizedek came to, to, to Abram and, and, and now we see that the Lord in some type of way came to him and and he got to struggle with the Lord and wrestle with the Lord. And he but he realized that he was in the presence of the Lord here in, in this. He said, for I've seen God face to face and my life is preserved. He he said, my life is preserved even though I've been in the, in the presence, in the total presence of the Lord, my life is still preserved. I, I don't have any doubt about that. I, I know that for myself that I've been in the presence of the Lord. So he called the place Peniel, which means God's face. And verse 31 says, and as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him and he halted upon his thigh. Remember there when he left Luz, or as he changed the name to Bethel, there in the 28th chapter. He had happy feet when he left there. He was happy. He was dancing around. He was one, he was wonderfully blessed and praising God because he had seen he had been in the presence of God rather, and he named that place Bethel, God's house. He, and now uh, he he's here in this place. And when he leaves this particular area, he's walking with a limp. Things have changed. Now at that place, he got saved. Here is a place where he had been washed. He's sanctified. Now he sees God in a different light. Now he feels like he's seen God face to face. Now he has a message to tell someone. Now he has, has something to pass down to his sons. Now he's limping when he leaves there. He has permanent damage to him. He's not hopping like he did when he left from Luz or Bethel. He, now he is, he's limping when he leaves this place 20 years later. Now he's walking with a limp. Therefore, the children of Israel eat not the sinew which shank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh, unto this day, colon, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shank. Now, that, that could be muscle or, or the tendon. 
that but the children of Israel or the Israelite nation, the people of Israel wouldn't eat the 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 thigh muscle or that thigh piece of meat there because of what happened to Jacob or that happened to Israel that day because his name was changed that day to Israel. God did call this man. He did save him there in the, in the 28th chapter. But now in this 32nd chapter, he has sanctified him. When we are sanctified, we're not sanctified to, to jump around the church. We're sanctified to serve God. That which is sanctified is sanctified to be in the service of God. And we don't take things that are sanctified to God to use them to do anything with them. He was there now for God's service. Father God, we do thank you today for this for your, your word. And Lord, Lord, we do pray that this word will serve on our hearts all the day long. And Lord, help us to get in tune with the things that you have done in the life of Brother Jacob, changing his name from Hill Snatcher to govern by God. Let us be governed by you, Lord. Let us always seek your will and seek your way. Father, we do pray that you will search our hearts. Forgive us of sin. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.